It's an honor to have uh, Senator Ted Cruz on the program. Senator, how are you? Mark, I'm doing great. So when you're down in Boca, are you doing a book signing at Costco? I'm doing a book signing right there, my brother. I'm going to eat one of those big kosher hot dogs and get a soda and sign. By the way, did you get a copy of my book? I hope you did. Uh, I, I have a copy of your book. I'm reading it, and, and, and uh, you, you may have seen I told the New York Times it's a great reason people ought to, ought to buy it. You were very kind and suggested to people they read my book, uh, A Time for Truth, and, you're, and you're, your book is fantastic. So everyone should go buy a copy of it. You're great. You should consider doing ads on my show. But anyway, Senator, uh, it is a great pleasure. A couple things I want to ask you about. There's not a lot of focus on this Iran situation uh, out in the population. This concerns me a great deal. The President of the United States has cut a deal with this regime, which is the leading uh, you know, uh, sponsor of terrorism, and it is a, the leading terrorist nation. Sure. They're, they're advancing on ICBMs. They're going to get nukes. Everybody admits that after 10 or 15 years of this deal. It's going to threaten the United States and our allies. What the hell's going on here? Well, Mark, you're, you're exactly right. This, this Iranian nuclear deal is catastrophic. Uh, and it is, if this deal goes through, there will be three immediate consequences. The first is the Obama administration will become quite literally the world's leading financier of radical Islamic terrorism. Over $100 billion will flow to the Ayatollah Khamenei. Billions of those dollars will flow directly to Hamas, to Hezbollah, to the Houthis, to jihadists that will use it to murder Americans, Israelis, and Europeans. Number two, if the deal goes through, we'll abandon four of our hostages in Iran, including Pastor Saeed Abedini, an American citizen in prison for eight years, for preaching the gospel. And number three, if this deal goes through, as you just noted, it will only accelerate Iran's acquiring nuclear weapons. The Ayatollah Khamenei chants death to America while burning American and Israeli flags. And this deal is the height of foolishness. I'll tell you, I'm trying to do everything humanly possible to energize and mobilize the American people against it. I would encourage every one of your listeners, light up the phone, Call your elected representatives. Tell them to vote against allowing the Ayatollah Khamenei to have weapons that he could use to murder millions of Americans. And we've got to stand up against it And 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 because this is the single greatest national security threat facing America is the threat of a nuclear Iran. Now, you know, Senator, I'm also concerned about this White House, this administration politicizing these CENTCOM reports, these uh, yes. CENTCOM intelligence reports when it comes to ISIS, uh, the, the White House seems to be uh, censoring uh, the real information, and their political generals uh, appear to be doing their dirty work for them. What's going on with that? Well, y- you are exactly right. It is one of the most uh, troubling reports we've seen, that, 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 that essentially it appears the administration is is skewing its intelligence to, to report what it wants. And, and that is, uh, it's a classic sign of a political agenda that is disconnected from protecting the national security of this country. And I'll point out, CENTCOM, if they're skewing the intelligence with regard to ISIS, CENTCOM also covers Iran. And, and what intelligence are they skewing on Iran that, that are fueling these misguided talking points for the administration? When, when it comes to protecting America, this shouldn't be driven by politics. Uh, and, you know, as you know, in the, in the next month, Congress is likely to vote on, on this catastrophic Iranian nu- nuclear deal. Sadly, Congress has given away its constitutional authority to ratify it as a treaty or reject it as a treaty. And so it's going to take two-thirds of the Senate and two-thirds of the House to defeat it, which means Obama needs to hold on to 34 Democratic senators to, to push through this, this this terrible deal. You know, I think it is especially important for your listeners who live in states that are represented by Democrats to let their elected representatives hear from them. I mean, there used to be a tradition, Mark, of Scoop Jackson Democrats, of JFK mm-hmm. Democrats, of Joe Lieberman Democrats, Democrats who valued national security and were willing to defend this country. And the decision that every Democratic senator and member of the House has to face is do you value more the national security of America, standing with our friend and ally, the nation of Israel, and protecting the lives of millions of Americans from murderous jihadis, 
or do you value more partisan loyalty to the Obama White House? Already 30 Democratic senators have answered that question and said they value partisan loyalty more than national security to, 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 of this nation. We need the people of this country to light up their phones and say this should not be a hard choice. Do not allow a theocratic zealot who pledges death to America to have weapons that could murder millions of Americans. Oh, I thought you meant Obama there for a minute, theocratic zealot. Let me ask you this question. Senator, um, since Obama obviously has violated whatever s- this, this Corker statute was all about, he ran immediately to the U.N. Security Council to get the help yep. from the Russians and the Chinese to push this through. Now the Democrats with the White House priding are talking about an actual filibuster of this vote. Why doesn't the Republican leadership of the United States Senate stand up and say, you know what? All bets are off now. We're treating this as a treaty. Why won't they do that? Look, we absolutely should do that. Even at a bare minimum, leadership, Mitch McConnell and John Boehner, could simply say under the terms of the pathetically weak corker Carton bill, the 60-day clock doesn't start ticking until the full agreement has been handed over, and there are side deals with the IEA that haven't been given yet to Congress, and so the 60-day clock hasn't started ticking and no sanctions can be lifted until the 60-day clock kicks. That's what leadership should say, and yet, unfortunately, it appears that they're prepared to roll over, uh, to have a show vote, to lose the show vote, and then move on to their real priorities, which is growing government, passing corporate welfare, and passing cronious programs like the Export-Import Bank. It, it, It makes no sense. And if we actually agree, if Republicans actually agree with the words coming out of their mouth, that the greatest national security threat to America is a nuclear Iran, then we should act like it and use every tool we have available to stop this catastrophic deal so that billions of dollars in the control of the American government aren't sent to jihadists and used to murder Americans. If that happens, the blood will be on the hands of every American politician who facilitated those billions going to the Ayatollah Khamenei. Do I understand correctly, you voted for an amendment or something, I don't understand all the Byzantine operations up there, but you voted for an amendment (laughs) to treat this as a treaty in the end, is that correct? Uh, Absolutely, we should have treated it as a treaty. I also had an amendment to say at the bare minimum, the sanctions couldn't be lifted without the affirmative approval of both houses of Congress, essentially to treat it as requiring a statutory change that would take both houses of Congress. In both instances, Republican leadership was unwilling to stand up and fight for that. They were more interested in essentially having a show vote than stopping it. And I'll tell you, when I stood up in the Republican lunches and argued that that passing a toothless review statute would not give us the ability to stop this, I was shouted down by my colleagues who said, don't screw this up. We've got a bill we can pass. The Democrats agree to it. Well, yes, it's a bill the Democrats voted for because they believed it wouldn't stop the deal. The object isn't to have a show vote. The object is to protect this country. That ought to be our top priority. Well, Senator, I think this is why you don't need to say this. Uh, Lindsey Graham is at minus zero percent in polls, and uh, people, uh, if if if, uh, if McConnell had to run nationwide, he'd get blown out. If if uh, if Boehner had to run nationwide, he'd get blown out. They may be strong in their individual districts or even somewhat strong in their states. But Republicans, rank-and-file Republicans, and certainly conservatives, are furious, and they're fed up. Issue after issue, Obamacare, Dodd-Frank, illegal immigration, this deal with Iran, surrendering the treaty power. Then they're going to lift the debt ceiling in September, and the Democrats are going to run wild because McConnell's already surrendered the power of the purse. This is why people like you and Ben Carson and Trump and others are gaining momentum. People have had enough. Mark, you are exactly right. We are frustrated out of our minds because we keep winning elections, and yet nothing changes. We were told if only we had a Republican House of Representatives, things would be better. In 2010, millions of us rose up. We got a Republican House, and very little changed. Then we were told the problem is the Senate. How many how many times did you listen to Washington Mandarin say, we only have one half of one third of the government, we can't do anything yeah. with it? Right. So the American people rose up in 2014 by the millions. We won the largest majority in the House since the 1920s. We won nine Senate seats. We retired Harry Reid as majority leader. 
And what has the Republican majority in both houses done? Most people, when I ask that, say nothing. But as you know, it's worse than nothing. Mm-hmm. We, we came back after the election. The first thing Republican leadership did is join with Harry Reid in passing a trillion-dollar cromnibus bill filled with corporate welfare and pork. Then we voted to fund Obamacare. Then we voted to fund executive amnesty. Then, th- then we voted to fund Planned Parenthood. And then Republican leadership took up the lead to confirm Loretta Lynch as attorney general. Now, which one of those decisions is one iota different? than what would have happened under Harry Reid, the Democrat. Well, Senator, you're... That's you're exa- why people are so ticked. You're exactly right. Keep hammering away. It's a long campaign. Keep hammering away. A lot of people love you. A lot of people support you. I've got to take a break and be safe on the campaign trail. Be well. Mark, God bless you. And everyone, come to TedCruz.org. The support is incredible, and thank you for everything you're doing. God bless you. TedCruz.org.